Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, José González, and uh, I'm going to, uh, to present a paper entitled Invocation Robot Summer Camp at IoT, the Challenge Based Learning Case Study. It was a, a work with, uh, that involved uh, lots of persons, uh, the authors, and uh, some uh, students, some secondary school students that uh, were uh, at this, uh, this summer camp. Uh, I'm from the Polytechnic Institute of Bragança, but I'm also a researcher at the Robotics Intelligence Research, Research, Research Group from Investec, Portugal, and also uh, I am an integrated member of a new research group in uh, digitalization intelligent robotics uh, that we founded uh, this year in, um, in uh, Bragança. Uh, we also had uh, the participation of uh, some uh, international students, uh, Tadeu, Laiani, Caio, and, uh, um, and uh, Victor uh, Oliveira. Uh, they are, uh, uh, they are uh, international students from Brazil and they are now uh, studying in Greece. Uh, we also had uh, the cooperation of uh, Miguel. Uh, from the University of Leon. Uh, he was not there at the moment, but we had some uh, Skype meetings and he uh, uh, helped us in uh, uh, many parts of the, of the summer. So, uh, this experiment was a part of the summer camp. The summer camp was uh, uh, held at the Polytechnic Institute of Progressa. Uh, uh, and uh, their uh, technological aspects were related with, uh, essentially, with the mobile mobile robot. So uh, uh, the students had uh, uh, had to deal with the, uh, the, chal the challenges, and the, the some technical technological aspects related with mobile robotics, but also they had many social activities. Uh, they uh, they uh, they had uh, met lots lots of persons in uh, uh, many students, professors, researchers, uh, different colleagues, and also laboratory uh, technicians. So they were involved. How many persons they were involved in this uh, in this experiment? Uh, three professors, uh, two uh, from uh, the Polytechnic Institute of Bragança. Uh, and one from the University of Leon, and um, four monitors, our uh, master um, uh, master students, and uh, 16 secondary school students. These students they were all um, uh, from Portugal, uh, all over some all over the country. Um, only two or three were from uh, from the city of Bragas. Uh, this experiment was planned as an activity of a Robosteam uh, project that Miguel uh, referred uh, in the previous presentation. These were the participants of the summer camp. I am here, Joselina is here, uh, and uh, the master students, uh, Tadeo, uh, Miami, uh, Caio is here and uh, Philippe is uh, around here somewhere. And uh, all, all our students, and uh, they were uh, at our uh, laboratory of control, automation, and robotics. Usually, we uh, the summer camps and the, the classes that are related to automation, control, and robotics are in this, uh, in this laboratory. So, uh, every year, uh, the Polytechnic Institute of Bragança promotes. Uh, summer camps, um, but uh, this year it was different because uh, we uh, also had uh, uh, the support from uh, this project, uh, Robots project, and also from the, uh, five, five, um, for the Foundation for Science and Technology, the Portuguese uh, Foundation for Science and Technology. Here we have the students working at uh, the, the laboratory. Uh, this is uh, one of my master students, Kai, and uh, he was one of the monitors 
and they are working uh, in, uh, at this moment they're working in a nano challenge. So, here we have some challenge description. We only work with uh, mini challenge and nano challenge. And this was the, uh, the mini challenge. So, over the years, uh, increasing fossil fuels as a source of energy for vehicles has generated a major impact on the environment. So, um, the big challenge was they had to think about this and they had to solve this problem uh, by using mobile robotics. So mobile robotics powered by uh, electrical uh, energy and uh, they were uh, uh, they were 16 students uh, each, uh, each uh, they were separated in four different groups uh, they made their research and uh, they proposed solutions. And they also uh, had to deal with the nano challenges. So, this is one of the nano challenges. Uh, I'm following MBOT. Uh, it was programmed uh, using uh, uh, Scratch. They also uh, had another uh, line following uh, uh, nano challenge. Uh, this one was a, a custom made uh, robot. It, was, it is a 3D printed mobile robot based on Arduino. And uh, uh, one of the, the nano challenge was to uh, develop, uh, um, to prototype and program a stroboscope. Uh, I told you before that. All the nano challenges were related with mobile robotics. We used this stroboscope to calibrate some uh, robot parameters uh, because uh, uh, mobile robots and robots uh, they have moving parts, and those uh, moving parts uh, with some angular velocity uh, they need to be calibrated. So we used a uh, stroboscope for that purpose. So in order to evaluate. Uh, each uh, mini challenge and nano challenge. This uh, was part of the template that was provided by uh, by Miguel. We uh, uh, registered the time plot to solve the challenge, the degree of success of prototyping, calibrating, programming mobile robot, time required to complete robot nav navigation through a scenario, number of mobile robots used, number of people involved in the, in the challenge. Uh, we also uh, made a survey previous to the challenges, after the challenge, in order to, uh, to uh, uh, have the steam, uh, to evaluate the steam perception of the students before and after the, the challenge. So, from this experiment, it was possible to obtain several conclusions. So, students are easily engaged in technology and programming. The use of challenges gives them more freedom to address their tasks and the possibility to involve not only their peers, but teachers, experts, parents, um, and so on. The use of challenges provides students for a wider perspective of, of problems. It's not only solving problems or, or, or projects. Uh, one of the things that uh, it was very interesting is that uh, previous to, uh, to to solve a nano challenge, they had to reflect. They had to reflect why that technology has to be used, and uh, uh, they uh, they uh, include that critical thinking. Uh, not only by solving the nano challenge, but the previous uh, mini challenge. And it's not necessary deep knowledge on programming or robotics to complete nano challenges. Mainly when uh, they uh, solved the nano challenge uh, using Scratch, it was uh, uh, very interesting to see uh, students that uh, never programmed and they understood how Scratch works and they uh, were able to solve some nano challenge using this, this approach. Student perception about the uh, speed improves after the, the experiment. It was uh, this um, survey uh, 
before and after gave us this information. So taking, uh, taking these into account, it, it was clear that challenge-based learning approaches uh, work properly in controlled environments and the use of robotics and physical devices can be positive to develop skills related to those demanded by digital society. So, thank you for your attention.